բարև ձեզ հարգերի կործ ընկերներ և արձանց հետևորդներ, այսօր մեջյա կենտրոնը կանցկացնի արձանց հարցազրույց ժողորդավարական ինտեգրացյա կենտրոնի տնորեն, ժողորդավարական ընտրությունների եվրոպական պլատվորմի փորձակեր և շվեծյայի Ես տեղեկացնեմ, որ անտոն շեխողցովի փորձագիտական հիմնական ուղությունը եվրոպական ծայրահեղ աչերի խմբերն են եվրոպան ռուսական բացսական ազդեցությունը և կենտրոնական ու արևերյան եվրոպայի ոչ լիբերալ միտումները։ ներողություն եմ խնդրում տեխնիկական խնդրի համար, ես կրկին ներկացնեմ, որ մետյակենտրոն այսօր կանցկացնի արձանց հարցազրույց, ժողորդավարական ինտեգրացյակ ենտրոնի տնորեն, ժողորդավարական ընտրությունների եվրոպական պլատվորմի փորձակեր և շվեծիայի միջազգային հարցերի ինստիտութի հետազոտող անտոն շեխովցովի հետ։ Հուսաստանը Good day and thank you for the invite. Ես Մերդեսանի համար տեղեկացնեմ, որ անտոն շախովցովի փորձագիտական հումնական ուղությունը եվրոպական ծայրահեղ աչերի խմբերն են, եվրոպայում ռուսական բացական ազդեցությունը և կենտրոնական ու արևերյան եվրոպայի ոչ լիբերալ միտումները։ Եվ առաջին հարցը պարոնշախովցով դուք երկար տարիներ ուսումնասիրում եք եվրոպական ծայրահեղ աջ շարժումները, ուսումնասիրում եք նրանց միջազգային կապերը, ռուսալեզու նոր ծայրահեղ աչերը եվրոպական Well, let me first start with saying saying that Russia, of course, currently tries to influence the far right in Europe. Uh, it did not, um, it did not, uh, it was not the case for all the time uh, uh, after the demise of the Soviet Union. Uh, and Russia only recently or comparatively recently started building those connections with the European far right. And the main reason why it is doing so uh, since I would say 2000, 2012, 2013, is because Russia is losing mainstream support in the West. It's losing uh, mainstream support um, among you know, moderate politicians, uh, especially those who are in power. This is not the case for all the uh, European nations, but it's the case for, I would say, the general, uh, general picture in the EU. And uh, Russia is doing, uh, or Russia is reaching out to the European far right for many reasons. Uh, some reasons are um, uh, connected to the media, uh, because Russia needs to show to its own citizens, to its own domestic audience, that Russia is not isolated. And while it would be very difficult to, listen, uh, to, to hear these ideas from mainstream politicians, um, the far-right politicians would be ready to do this, and they would uh, support Russia's actions abroad. Uh, it will support uh, even some domestic uh, domestic policies in Russia that the mainstream politicians would probably find problematic. But for the far-right, it's no problem to support Russia here. Uh, but of course, Russia is also using uh, the European far-right to advance its particular political narratives in Europe. Uh, it would talk to these people, to European far-right politicians, and then the European far-right politicians would be repeating the same narratives, the same ideas in their own national contexts. And this is important because if you, for example, um, if you live in Italy or if you live in Austria and uh, 
you would hear something said by Russian politicians, by the Russian leadership concerning the international relations. You would probably not take these ideas, take those uh, narratives seriously, because, well, it's coming from abroad. Yeah, it's coming from another country. Why, we sh why should we be interested in those foreign interpretations of what is going on in our country or in the EU? But when you hear these from local politicians, then it makes much more sense. And the same ideas would be, the same messages would be taken much more seriously than, than those coming from abroad. Sonakalamisk Hetakide, Yerpsk, Svets, Rusastani, Aspesasats, Sidaka, Yavrapakan, Zaira, Cheri Head, Yev Rusastanum of Keren, Sertka Perpapanum Nerans Head, Aduknashatik, Pajarneda, Napatakneda, I two hundred Skarhan Knashat of Keren, Sertka Perpapanum, Yev of Keren, hence Nerank, Grambitz, Ida Herach and Kerneri, Yavrapayum. Well, um, it all started, of course, when we are talking about just uh, various Russian politicians who are not necessarily part of the elites, uh, those contacts uh, with the European far right, they already started in the 90s. Uh, for example, Vladimir Zhirinovsky was one of the uh, more significant uh, Russian politicians who built contacts with the European far right. Uh, Alexander Dugin, uh, also uh, participated in building those networks. However, those politicians, uh, they were never part of a you know, real elite in Russia. And when we are talking about, for example, the United Russia Party, or when we're talking about the Russian parliament, these contacts, these particular specific contacts with the European far right started around 2012, 2013. And um, uh, in Eastern Europe, of course, it's uh, quite difficult for Russia to have um, contacts with, with the European far right for, for many reasons. And one of those reasons are historical reasons. And I'm talking about the European Union at the moment. Because if you look at countries such as Poland, such as Romania, um, or the even, well, it's not Eastern Europe, but uh, Northern Europe, the Baltic states, for historical reasons, people are quite cautious about Russia. They're quite skeptical about Russia. So far-right parties in those countries would probably not be so much interested in cooperating with uh, Russian politicians. However, if we look further to the West, we will see that parties such as uh, in France, that would be a National Rally, uh, party of Marine Le Pen, uh, we will see that in Austria, the Freedom Party of Austria, in Italy, uh, the Le Lega uh, Party uh, in Belgium, that would be Flemish Interest and some other parties, we will see that they are more or less uh, can be described as pro-Kremlin parties, as parties that are supportive of um, or promoting even uh, geopolitical interests of the Russian Federation. Uh, then we have countries such as uh, Hungary, where we see that the authoritarian leader, Viktor Orban, is uh, on good terms with the Russian Federation. It's not to say that he is following uh, what Russia is telling him to do. He is quite independent, but at the same time, because he is in conflict, he himself is in conflict with Brussels, with the EU leadership, it makes him a practical ally of uh, Putin's regime. So in general, this is the, uh, this is the picture. Uh, in Scandinavia, for example, um, far-right parties are quite ambivalent towards Russia. And again, for, for historical reasons, but also for the reasons that in Scandinavia, um, they have a political culture that is very strongly opposed to even the idea of corruption. And because Russian connections with the far right, they very often include this corrupt element. So even far right parties in Scandinavia don't want to get involved in something that can damage their reputation in their own societies. Thank you. 
Բարոն շախաղցավ, այդ ու հանդերց, ով է իրականում մի միանցից ոգնություն ու աջակցություն պնտրում։ Հուսաստանը եվրոպական աջ տայրը հեղականներից, թե հակարակա, թե եվ դուք նաև նշեցիք հա, յուրականչուն ունի իր շահերը։ I think that both parties are benefiting from their cooperation. Russia gives media platform for the European far right. Using its resources such as RT or Sputnik News and some other resources, they give the media platform, they give them media visibility that they lack in their own countries. In their own countries, the mainstream media, which is, of course, uh, considered to be an enemy of uh, illiberal politicians, you know, mainstream media, much demonized, they are, well, quite critical of the European far right. So the European far right uh, in Italy, in France, in Austria, in other countries, in Spain, they cannot um, get this, you know, sort of positive picture positive interpretations of them in their own national mainstream media. But Russians can do this. They can give this positive view on them. And this is, uh, this is very useful for the European far right that are usually indeed they lack these media visibility or positive media visibility in their own homes. On the, one, uh, on the other hand, Russia uh, what it receives yeah, in, not in exchange, but um, in its own turn uh, from the European far right is that the European far right are pushing uh, useful narratives for the, for the Kremlin in the European Union. They are sort of, the European far right sometimes a function as a, an extend, extension of the Kremlin propaganda machine. Um, sometimes uh, uh, European far right parties also receive political support. Like, for example, in 2017, you may know that Marine Le Pen, just one month before the first round of the presidential elections in France, she went to uh, Moscow to meet with uh, Vladimir Putin. And that was, of course, a very clear message of political support that, you know, just one month before the presidential elections, that was a clear message that Marine Le Pen was the Kremlin's candidate, or at least the candidate that who the Kremlin supported in those presidential elections against Emmanuel Macron. Uh, very, very, um, and basically this is the most difficult part because we also know that in some cases there is financial support involved. But unfortunately, we don't know, and by we I'm saying uh, experts who are dealing with, uh, with this sort of research, we don't have many proven cases of where we could say, uh, well, here there was this financial support coming from Russia to the Euro European far right parties or politicians, but real evidence that we can build our arguments on. Պանք հաղթաղթը դուք նշեցիք, որ լրատվա միջոցներն են հիմնականում, այսպես որպես միջոց հա ոգտագործվում, եթե հանցնենք դավադրության տեսություններին, ինչ տեղ են գրավում դավադրության տեսությունները Հուսաստան, ուպրայինա, եվրոպական աչեր, այս համագործակցությունում և հետաքրքիր է մասնավորապես ինչ տեսություններ են շրջանարվում ու դրանք ինչ ազդեցություն it is a fact that Russia is spreading some conspiracy theories using its uh, media resources, again, such as RT and Sputnik. However, in most cases, Russia prefers to amplify already existing conspiracy theories that are originating from the West itself. So what RT is doing, especially in the American context, is that it is taking genuinely American conspiracy theories and amplify their spread. 
Uh, they're, they're, they're just, you know, uh, they're contributing to the spreading of those conspiracy theories. It is, it is a very rare case that Russian media, especially those international media, just such as RT and Sputnik, that they themselves come up with their own conspiracy theories, like Russian-born conspiracy theories. Yet, it, sometimes they, they do occur. Uh, however, um, some would say that those are not conspiracy theories, but just disinformation narratives. Because conspiracy theory is something you know really big. It involves the explanation, or alternative explanation of you know world affairs. But uh, in general, um, uh, and one, for example, one of those disinformation narratives that comes to mind is when uh, in Germany, uh, Russian media tried to promote a story of um, an underage girl who was allegedly raped by uh, migrants or refugees, whatever, and the story turned out to be false. However, that story, and this is where we're talking about impact, this story did make a scandal. This story did uh, make people go on streets and protest against the government uh, allegedly trying to cover up this story. So impact, uh, it is there, and, but mostly it's because uh, Russia using these resources of propaganda and disinformation uh, contribute to the um, a greater visibility of those disinformation narratives and conspiracy theories. հետաքրքիրը եթե ընդհանրություններից եւ տարբերություններից խոսենք մանիպուլյատիվ տեղեկատվության ռազմավարություններում եւ պատմույթներում նարատիվներում կարող եք նշել ընդհանրություններն ու տարբերությունները դուք նա ձեր խոսքում նշեցիք որ եվրոպական ծայրահեղաչերի եւ ռուսաստանի համագործակցությունը հիմնականում այդ քաղաքական նարատիվ ուժեղացնելու նաեւ համար է նաեւ եւ թե քաղաքական նարատիվի մասով խոսենք ինչ նարատիվ է այս պահին հա շրջանառվում ընդհանրում Mm -hmm. uh, we can, I think, distinguish between two types of those disinformation narratives or propagandistic narratives um, that Russia is trying, Putin's Russia is trying to spread uh, using its uh, international media resources uh, and also uh, uh, using the European far right. One type of those narratives are uh, usually uh, short-term ideas or short-term messaging. Uh, let me give you an example. Last year, uh, in spring, uh, Russia was involved in two uh, influence operations uh, related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it provided um, humanitarian help to Italy and to Serbia, and it tried to show that uh, the EU was a useless institution that did not care about either Italy, its member state, or countries that are candidates to join the European Union, such as Serbia. The idea was to discredit the European Union and uh, show that, look, China is helping, Russia is helping those countries, but the EU or NATO, they don't do anything. That was untrue, that was false. Uh, Russia indeed sent humanitarian help to Italy. However, the EU uh, did it first, or at least they did it earlier uh, than the Russians did. Uh, in the case of Serbia, uh, Serbia had help from the EU, from China, although China was probably indeed the first, but Russia came in third. So it, it was just a false narrative. However, they promoted this narrative also using far-right political forces to show again, and that was to show that the EU is doing nothing related to the pandemic. So, but those are sort of, you know, short-term messaging. However, there is also mid-term and long-term messaging. And usually this messaging, uh, again, using the uh, far-right it is about ideas 
uh, or arguments how uh, entire European liberal civilization is failing, how it is uh, degenerate, how it is, you know, basically falling apart because of liberalism, because of multiculturalism. It is about the, for example, about the Euro zone uh, falling apart. It's about how migrants are taking over the European Union. It's about how the US is trying to undermine the European Union and how it gives orders to Brussels. Uh, it's also about globalization. Um, Russia criticizes the uh, cr criticizes globalization, especially uh, the Western style or liberal globalization. So these are these mid and long term narratives that Putin's regime is promoting using the European far right, but not only them, but also far left forces, all sorts of uh, isolationists and conspiracy theorists. Այդ պարագայում հետաքրքիր է ինչն է դրդում ծայրահեղաչերին թիրախավորել որինակ ջորջ Սորոսին և բաց հասարակության արժեքները։ Ինչու են մարդկանցից շատերը հեշտությամբ ենթարկում այդ տեսությունների ազդեցությանը։ Yes, uh, of course, um, uh, George Soros is one uh, or probably even the most demonized uh, figure uh, by authoritarian regimes, by illiberal regimes. And this is quite understandable why they hate him so much. It's because he built um, the Open Society Foundations uh, that gives grants, uh, quite generous grants, to promote the ideas of the open societies, of liberal societies across the world, but especially in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Of, of course, in some other places of the world as well, but since we are focusing on this region, it, I think it's important uh, to, 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 to say this. Um, people, many people uh, believe in conspiracy theories, uh, not because they are so elaborate, not because they are uh, smart conspiracy theories. For example, if we are talking about non-political non conspiracy theories, one of those crazy theories would be the flat earth idea, you know, that the, the earth is not round, that it is flat, in fact. And there are many people who believe in this. Um, one explanation which I find uh, uh, quite most reasonable, perhaps, is that people, feel disempowered, people feel weak. They look at what is going on in the world and they probably can't understand how they can uh, make some changes in the world. And they feel totally disempowered. They, 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 they believe that they can't do anything to change anything. And then, they are introduced to these conspiracy theories that provide um, mad explanations of the world. But with those mad explanations also come an idea that there is a world uh, government or there are some malign forces, uh, very powerful enemies that are to blame for those people's problems in the world for their ills. And gi this gives a very comfortable feeling. It's not that I am so weak and I, am, I can't do anything. There are bigger enemies, there are greater enemies that do not let me do what I want. And this is a very comfortable feeling. It's also a very powerful feeling. So this, uh, I believe, it's a theory that explains why uh, so many uh, so many people believe in uh, conspiracy theories and why they find them attractive. Uh, 
Այդ դեպքում հետաքրքիր է ասծես ինչ պետք է անեն ժողովրդավարական պետությունները, հասարակություններին, ծայրահեղական, դավադրապաշտական այդ ճարժունների նկատման, պայսպես ասաց անվտանգության Բարձպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպեսպես
ի հետ այդ հանդերս նաև ընդգծեցիկ որ այսպես սա ծապատվիցներ չկան ինձ հետա կշկրում է հետախուզական ծառայություններ սկսել են ուսումնասիրում են այդ հնարավոր կապերը um let me say that uh, the most significant uh, example of financial support uh, or assistance for the far right is the uh, example of the um uh, French far right party uh, uh Front National now it's called a national rally but uh, until 2019 it was known as Front National or National Front and they in 2014 they received a bank loan of uh, nine around nine million euros uh, from a Russian bank. Um, I must say that this is a bank loan. This is not a present in a suitcase. And uh, although they now have have an opportunity to repay it in several years, so uh, the conditions are quite good, I would say. But this is the only good example that we have about the uh, financial support. Uh, what I know for sure that, of course, uh, there have been investigations and or investigations are still going on, um, investigations by journalists, but most importantly, investigations by uh, security services. However, um, so far I have not seen in public domain any results of those investigations. Um, or there were uh, results or negative results of the investigations. For example, in Italy, there was a scandal um, triggered by the leaked conversations of some functionaries or members of the far right Lega party with their uh, Russian contacts. And then, and they were discussing financial support from Russia for this party. However, uh, well, because of the scandal, there was, an inst there was indeed an uh, investigation in that case but Italian law enforcement did not find any uh, corrupt schemes or they, that they could not confirm that the Lega party indeed received any financial support uh, from Russia. Այս պարագայում այդ ու հանդերց, ինչ է Մոսկվան հենց եվրոպական ծայրը հեղա չերի համար։ Հետաքրքիր են նրանք իսկապես հավատում են, որ իրենք ինչ որ արժեկային հարաբերություններ են զարգացրել Հուսաստանի ներկայի Of course, there, uh, there are many reasons uh, why the European far right uh, supports Russia. There are these uh, tactical reasons, of course. And um, I, I think that these uh, media platforms that Russia has and that it can provide to the European far right is one of those tactical, um, technical interests of, of the of, of European far right parties. However, there are, there are also the strategic views of Russia or strategic imagining of Russia. For the European far right, Russia is first and foremost a country that opposes globalization, uh, a country that defends traditional and family values, a country that is in the West. It doesn't really matter um, that some of those of these beliefs are false, I don't see how Russia is actually supporting or defending traditional values. Uh, it's not uh, Russian society is not a conservative society. Uh, I also can't uh, can't see how Russia opposes globalization when it it benefits from globalization and it contributes uh, with its well hyper capitalism to this globalization and international projects. However, it's important that the European far right believe in these ideas and how they themselves uh, see Russia. Also, uh, and this is important in my opinion, uh, they, they feel similarity between their own ideological uh, foundations and what Putin's regime 
tells them about itself or how it presents itself. So and Putin's regime, it, indeed, it wants to be seen as the defender of traditional values and uh, as the, the main opposition to globalization. And the European far right, which for many, many years after the Second World War, were on the margins of the European societies, on the fringes of the European societies, they see that there is a huge country, essentially the, the largest in the world, that has an ideology, or they imagine the, it has an ideology, that is very similar to their ideology. And then it also gives a feeling that their ideology, their far-right doctrines, they're not marginal anymore. They're not fringe anymore. They are essentially an alternative mainstream because the same ideas can be found in such a great country such as Russia. So they are, what they're talking, uh, or what, how they're promoting this, uh, this thesis is that they are no longer on the margins. They are a new alternative mainstream. And of course, uh, Russian media and Russian international resources are strengthening this idea that Russia is not in isolation, that Russia is the leader of an alternative, of a global alternative project. And this, um, is, a, this is an attractive model uh, for the European far right. Yev, uh, I think that uh, in 2021, we will largely see uh, the continuation of um, Russia's actions aimed at undermining liberal democracy in the European Union. Uh, we now see, uh, we now hear uh, from Russian foreign ministry uh, statements that uh, quite strongly suggest that Russia even, even may be ready for um, dramatic deterioration of the relations between the EU and Russia. Uh, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov even um, threatened to cut ties uh, with the European Union. And in my opinion, this of course will uh, will translate at least these these com these communications or these messages. They will translate into Russia's actions, uh, aiming to undermine the EU even further. Um, this year will be very important because uh, Germany will hold uh, federal elections to the Bundestag, and uh, Germany being the well one of the uh, major leaders of the European Union is uh, a natural target uh, for Russian disinformation and for Russian malign influence and in general political warfare. So I, I'm afraid we should expect attempts of Russia um, to interfere in, 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 in German elections and probably we should expect that the far right alternative for Germany uh, will be probably the the uh, the party that will benefit the most from Russian political warfare against uh, liberal democratic Germany. Um... Thank you. Thank you.
ժողովրդավարական ինտեգրացիա կենտրոնի տնորեն ժողովրդավարական ընտրությունների եվրոպական պլատֆորմի փորձագետ եւ շվեդիայի միջազգային հարցերի ինստիտուտի հետազոտող Անտոն Շեխովցովի հետ Ռուսաստանը, Ուկրաինան եւ Արեմտյան ծայրահեղաչերը թեմայով։ Շարակալություն, հաջողություն Պան Շեխովցով։ Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation and for having me.